Hello, can you guys hear me? You can? Good, good. Maybe? Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, I'm just seeing if you guys can hear me. There might be kind of a little bit of a, um, a hiccup. Chickenberry, was it you? You were flapping around, you were having the bird zoomies, and I was like, Chickenberry, calm down, they're gonna hear you before I'm ready for the stream. So I messed around with the mic. Hey, all right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yay, all right, now you guys can hear me. Sorry, my bad. Chickenberry had the bird zoomies right before I was about to hit go live, and I needed to do a couple more things, so I like, muted the mic in a new way just real quick because i was like chickenberry calm down you've got the bird zoomies and you're just like flying around the cage so fast uh to tell her to behave and be careful and then i messed the mic up so chickenberry chickenberry are you in league with tata the trickster oh you sneezed oh chickenberry you're so cute i'm sorry i take it back <laughs> But all right, good. Thank you, Rada. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Wonderful. Oh, hey, Tomo. Yeah, there's bananas on the screen because we love bananas around here. I actually have a banana on my desk that I'm going to eat as a stream snack. But hi, guys. I am so... Oh, my gosh. Somebody from Russia. Hi. I'm so glad to see... Um see all of you also i have the webcam off today because i have actually been sick all week i feel really worn out and i really miss you guys and i really miss streaming uh so all right <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and keep the webcam off just so I have a little bit more energy. Yeah, backlog. Birds can sneeze. Birds can sneeze. Chickenberry just sneezed at me and now she's taking a nap. She's so cute. Hey, Lucius. Hey, Lucius. It's so good to see you guys. <laughs> Hi, Leah. Oh my gosh. There's people from, oh, like, wow. Guernsey. Hang on, Animal Mad. That's so cool. I've got to look that up. Like, Guernsey, where is that even located? And then somebody from Poland? Oh, this is why I love the weekend. We have people from all over the world in our pixel biology community, you guys. Guernsey. Oh my gosh, you are from a small island in the, near, uh, in the English Channel near the French coast. It's self-governing. Uh, wow. Gosh, I learned something completely new about a whole new place of the world today. Thank you for telling me about that, friend. Uh, also, I hope you guys are ready for some really adorable bats. We are gonna go ahead. Hi from Canada and Nether Netherlands and North Dakota, which because I've not been there yet is still an exotic location to me. Uh, but hi everybody. So yeah, really glad to see all of you. Okay, but yeah, all right. Let me settle in. Let me get everything organized. Chickenberry, you doing good? Yeah, she's having a little nap. Chickenberry's doing good. Uh, let me get settled. Like I said, I have actually, unfortunately, been very sick all week long. So that's why I'm going to have webcam off. And I also might be a little bit more rambly because I actually haven't used my mic in a couple days, um, despite the adventure still going out. That was smart past, Siri. Pat yourself on the back, Siri. You had a feeling you were getting a cold, so you recorded ahead of time and covered your own rump. Good job, Siri. Um, but I am getting over uh, a bit of a bump of sickness, so no webcam. And if I am a little bit extra rambly, then now you guys know why. <laughs> so that's what's that's what's going to be up. Yeah, Lucius, it can get a little intense. It can get a little intense um, in chat for sure. But I hope you guys are all having just such a wonderful time. All right, so all of that said and all of the excitement to see you guys we are going to be working on our beloved nichelings today so let me go ahead and put away our little starting soon we are going to be working my friends with the fruit bats tribe which i really hope you guys have been enjoying and several of you enjoyed the fruit bat tribe that we had last week with the new nicheling update so much that we actually have some beautiful new nicheling fan art that i want to share with you guys really quickly um but out of curiosity oh thank you everybody for all the bananas and the bats oh this is so cool burberry <laughs> 
Pome from the Fruit Leaves tribe equals Burberry from the Fruit Bats tribe. Aw. Uh, but we had some really cute fan art I just wanted to share with you guys real quick. And I did want to ask you guys, uh, well, obviously, I know, please no more tragedies for the Fruit Bats. It was such a cool and intense week. It was some of the most fun I have had in Niche in a long time with our tribe last time. And I have some great plans in mind for them this time. I'm really, really looking forward to being able to share their stories with you guys. And out of curiosity, before we get started, um, how many of you guys know that we have a parallel tribe. We have the Fruit Lees tribe as well to our niche adventure. So, okay, I'm, I'm a little sick, so I'm probably not explaining this well. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and pull up a picture because I think the picture is gonna explain it better than my little, my little confused brain can. All right, give me just a second. So, fruit comparison. But yeah, how many, like, I fell so in love with our fruit bat tribe that I had to see banana, -na 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 -na, coconut, kumquat, and kiwi live out another life. And so we have another series that is currently going on. All right, give me just a second. But we have another series that is currently going on uh, in niche that's a normal Let's Play series that actually uses the exact same characters we started with in our stream last week. In a parallel universe, like an alternative universe, where we kept everything about the start the same, but we randomized a few different traits because the traits were somewhat random. And we are following banana coconut, kiwi, and kumquat in a another let's play. So they have two different worlds that may get really confusing for some of you guys. So we, cause we have two versions of the same tribe who are like living out parallel universes next to each other. Can you tell that I'm actually a big like Marvel and DC fan uh, behind the scenes where I'm like, I love this. Let's just start up an alternative universe. <laughs> um, but let me, let me see if I can find like we've got our fruit bat tribe and then, give me just a second. We also have uh, the fruit leaves tribe. There we go. And can I, let me see how I can compare these two. All right, yeah, we've got our fruit bat tribe. That's this one. Gosh, I messed this up. Give me one moment. And then we have got our fruit, there we go. Our fruit leaves tribe. So we did actually start a Let's Play series that if you haven't seen yet, I highly recommend it because it's been really fun. Where in order we have Banana -na 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 reborn in that Let's Play and she once again has the three orphans to watch over. And I won't go into it too much because the whole Let's Play is all about that. But we have Coconut in the alternative Let's Play universe uh, as the albino nicheling to the left. We have Kiwi as the spotted nicheling in the middle, and we have Kumquat as reborn. So Kumquat lives again, because Kumquat is dead in our streaming world. Uh, but we have Kumquat over to the right as a cracker jaw male. They have a lot more lore and they have a lot more story. So I have been adding more to our niche wiki, but it has been freaking amazing. So we've actually got this group, if you happen to love them, alive again uh, in that series. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that. But all right, there we go. Let me tuck that away, put up the normal niche fan art for just a second. But yeah, come God lives uh, over in the other series. However, last week, Kumquat died in this series pretty rapidly. It was tragic. The one thing that was kind of hilarious about Kumquat's death is as Kumquat, in fact, let's go ahead and dive into the game so I can point out where Kumquat died just to kind of like make this even more dramatic. Let me get the Zoot Tycoon 2 music all hum out, which means quiet in Hawaiian, if you don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll point out, Tata, don't you get up to your tricks today, sir. Uh, last week, Kumquat died, like Dunyan Rings dead. Uh, this week, however, 
Kumquat will hopefully live on in the lore through Kumquat's fruits, which are the name of the healing fruits. This tribe discovered the healing fruits at the end of last live stream. I won't recap too much because you guys can just watch the episode. It was freaking amazing. Uh, but we basically decided that the healing fruits will now be known as Kumquats to the fruit bat tribe. Uh, the fruit lings versus the fruit lees. Uh, but the fruit lings, our fruit bat tribe, this one, uh, will now call the healing fruits kumquats. And they now feel that it is very, very important for them. Uh, let me make sure my niche... Pfft, geez, my niche music was off. Sorry about that. Hopefully... Uh-oh. Oh, no! It's going through the wrong mic. Give me one second. <laughs> what are you doing, you silly sound thing? All right. Give me just a second. What are you doing? Playing through that? You shouldn't be playing through that. You should be... Uh... Playing through this one. Uh-oh! <gasps> Uh, give me just a second. I need to get the sound working for our niche adventure. So, uno momento, my friends. Uh, dun, 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 dun. There we go. Here, we have some pretty niche fan art for just a moment. Uh, all right, I need to restart the game. This always happens. That's okay. I may have forgotten to plug in my mic properly before we got going. All right, all right. What's going on here? All right, yeah, that should work. Let's try this again. All right, nobody panic. What did I just say? Tata, none of your tricks today. And immediately he gets up to some tricks. But yeah, Kumquat was so, <laughs> Kumquat was so sad. Yeah, the, the pictures are still there for just a moment because I am letting the fan art, as beautiful as it is, and this actually is some of my favorite fan art from hundreds of pieces through our hundreds of niche adventures. Ah, oh, there we go. Now it works. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes niche is just like a little bit finicky with me uh, and streaming. Probably because this is the land of Tata, -ta, not gonna lie. All right, let me get everything all organized again. None of your tricks, Tata. -ta. No, not the heartlings. Don't touch the heartlings. Save files, Siri. You know better. That would really be Tata's tricks. <laughs> I know, Tata took what I said as an opinion, right, Lucius? He was like, oh, it seems that you need my presence for the beginning of your stream. But yeah, right, Christy? I swear the fan art has just been amazing. I was looking through it this morning to collect the new fan art that people have done. Um, oh, there's blue. Oh. But yeah, I was looking for this new fan art that people have done for this tribe, and I got so emotional. I was just so blown away by the creativity and the thoughtfulness that people have put into all of our tribe members. And then when I was talking with the Patreon Discord this morning, I asked, what are you guys looking forward to for our stream today? And the resounding answer that I got back is telling stories with our nichelings to really allow their stories to come to life. So that, whoops, that is going to be what we will focus on with our little tribe today. So I'm very, very excited uh, to spend more time with the Fruitling tribe, our streaming tribe. And today's goals are going to be very, very fun. Uh, we are going to be focusing on uh, role-playing it up in the jungle. This is our little, this picture that just popped up with ban banana, 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 is our stream goals for the day. Because I am a little sick, I am having a hard time focusing sometimes. So I made a stream list of stream goals that I hope you guys will help me out with. Uh, it would really, oh, Olivia, thank you for all that fruit emoji. I do freaking love fruit emoji. It's really mm, delicious. I love emojis. Uh, but this is our stream goals. It is a list of what I hope to focus on for our beloved fruitlings today. We are going to RP it up in this jungle, which means to role play it up, we're going to really spend time getting to know each of our nichelings, which is so much easier and so much more fun to do now that they live longer, by the way. 
Uh, as I'm finding with our Fruit Lee's tribe, the Let's Play version of this tribe, not the stream version, there is so much more time when you extend how long the nichelings are children and adults for to really get to know them individually and to know their personality. And I am in love with that. So I'm hoping we can have some fun role play today with our wonderful fruitlings. I'm also hoping that we might discover a little bit more of the lore of these fruit bats versus the fruitling tribe. I won't go into that too much right now. Uh, again, if you're confused about the lore or the difference between the two tribes, check the video description for a link to the niche wiki. And Professor Callium has been working hard and I have added in some details of the roleplay lore behind these tribes. If that is your jam, like it is my jam, if you love getting to know these individuals and their stories, then the niche wiki will really help you figure out who is who and not get confused. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret too. I made that wiki almost entirely for myself because I am a goose. I have the brain of Swiss cheese. I forget things easily. So if it's Siri proof, so that Siri can't forget what the plots are and well, who the characters are and what the heck is supposed to be going on, the wiki is gonna be helpful for any of you who just want to be able to enjoy the story without feeling like you get a little lost. Also, there'll be bugs and we're gonna be discussing poisons with banana today. We have to address Nanot's parenting skills. And I got very proud of myself and very excited for all of the wonderful, very fun roleplay-esque storytelling we're going to be doing today. And then I realized when I popped back into our tribe, when I surveyed how the land was laid out, when I waved to Yu-Gi-Oh the Barina, when I waved over to the Kumquat fields where Kumquat, may she rest in peace, lies under this plant, I glanced down into the corner, my friends, and I realized that all of these absolutely beautiful roleplay-esque storytelling stream goals that we prepared for ourselves may have to wait until we have some food, because we're kind of broke on food. <laughs> We are kind of broke on food. Uh, oh, and thank you, Olivia. I do hope that you, uh, gosh, I'm so glad you guys like the, the RP. Because uh, that personally is what makes me me. And Sophia, yeah, we have nine creatures. We're thinking about having more babies now that Kiwi has recovered from his sleeping sickness that the bugs gave him. Uh, and, you know, -na 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 -na. I don't think, let me double check. Okay, yeah, this version of Banana has only had one child with Capybara, who is the half-breed son of Yu-Gi-Oh, the Barina, <laughs> who did the Barina battle. I still wish I had, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh, let's duel, like, sound bit, even though that'd get me copy written to, like, the principal's office and back. Um, but yeah, we have Yu-Gi-Oh, the Barina, who is with us. We will discuss him in a moment. Uh, but Banana Nene in this universe, in this reality, has not had a chance to have a child yet with uh, Kiwi, who is the only male of our fruit bat tribe, and try to help us with passing on those precious bat genetics. However, these two have just eaten from the kumquat fruits, and they have extended their life significantly. Uh, but nay, 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 like, was gonna die really soon, and unfortunately it looks like we might lose her today because she only has 16 days left to live. Uh, and she was mostly just spending the last moments of her life searching the swamp, trying to find where Kiwi had gone. She found Kiwi passed out at the edge of the swamp. He had come over here out of his excitement using his big, beautiful bat ears to hear the tiny buzzing of the mosquitoes and other insects in this swampy biome. He was very excited about them. And he walked in, uh, he started nibbling a couple of the insects. That was really delicious and wonderful. Oh my gosh, now there's Yu-Gi-Oh memes flying by in. <laughs> my Patreon Discord. <laughs> Patrons? Patrons, I'm gonna tell you guys another secret. Um, 
The reason we have the stream goals page and the reason I made a list to keep myself focused on the things that we needed to do is because y'all in chat, both Patreon and in YouTube chat, get me laughing so hard. Y'all distract me just amazingly. And what am I doing saying y'all? What is this? This isn't a Shine Sisters Strangerville stream. Come on, Siri, tuck that Texan back into your childhood and carry on. Uh, but the stream goals exist because you guys have me laughing so hard about the memes, patrons. And I, I forget what I was doing. So now I can remember. <laughs> Time to duel! Yeah, there's just tons of time to duel memes going on in the Patreon chat right now, you guys. Oh, if I wasn't holding a cup of tea right now, I would, um, I would definitely, I would definitely share some of them with you guys. Oh, laughter is a good thing. I hope you guys can find some of it in our stream today, too. Ah, but all right, where were we? Oh, Lucius, we are the followers of Tata. I will, I will struggle against you all yet with my powers of organization and beautifully laid out stream goals. I will fight against you minions of Tata trying to lure me away from focusing on telling stories in our stream. I really hope I don't eat those words later, but I will do it. I will do it, my friends. Uh, but all right, so we did leave off with Kiwi having wandered into the swamp, uh, thinking that this was an interesting sound, a naturally appealing sound, the way that a dog or cat hears the can of pet food open. And it's just like they're, they're attuned with Pablo's response, of course, but they're attuned to the sound of the pet food thing opening or the sound of, um, uh, for instance, when I make cookies, I guess that's more of a smell than a sound, but chips appears out of thin air regardless to eat them. Uh, or, you know, me with the sound of a delightful bird. There's just something about the way that some people hear sounds that just, they draw you towards that noise, even though you, you don't really acknowledge it on a, a thoughtful level. You just hear a sound and you're like, yes, I want that. Uh, and if, I guess for me, that would be a bird. For Chips, I don't know about the sound of cookies or the sound of chocolate, but somehow maybe he picks up on some like ultrasonic chocolate frequency and just appears. Um, Cause they sure don't have very much smell. <laughs> oh my gosh, Professor Callium, the real Pavlonian response. You are all now thinking of dogs. I freaking love that. Um, but all right, so, all right, uh, Kiwi, his sound that he had no logical explanation for being attracted to, but it simply drew him regardless, was the high-pitched wheezing. Would you call it wheezing? Or would you call it like whining? It's whining, isn't it? Do mosquitoes wheeze or whine? We must ask these vital questions of our day, my wonderful friends. <laughs> okay, Callium. I'm going to be pinning that in our Patreon chat. We might have to do some Texan nichelings that may actually have to happen for the Savannah tribe. What do you guys think? Okay, gosh darn it. This is why I have the stream goal list. Y'all are distracting me so much, but we might have to do Wild West nichelings in the future. Can you imagine? Like, we'll do a Savannah tribe. We'll focus on like new Savannah genes. We could do bunnel roundups where we try to herd the bunnels into a big like group. <laughs> that would be so much fun. We could see what the fire does. That would be amazing. Uh, all right, so anyway, and this tribe eats everything, I believe. It's the heartlings who don't eat crabbits I'm, and rabbits uh, and bunnels, just reminding me. But yeah, we will definitely, they buzz kind of wheeze. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they whine when there's no blood for them. <gasps> Cute cat. I love that idea. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, I put a pin in it. I put a pin in it literally because I put a pin in the discord chat, but we'll, we'll do a wild west nicheling tribe at some point. I have no idea what that even look like. I think that it would involve like bundle roundups, uh, like yeah, and everybody like gathers up for the great bundle roundup. Uh, oh, hey, thank you, Lord Zach. Some bananas to feed the tribe because they're kind of gonna starve anyway. 
<laughs> it's high noon. Oh my gosh, Lucius. Okay. Yeah, it'd be really fun. We'll, we will definitely figure it out. Uh, we'll definitely figure it out. For now, we have fruit bats. For now, we have fruit bats. All right, Siri, come on. You can do that. Okay. All right. Smack yourself in the face with the stream goals. Okay. Gently, by the way. Like, don't, don't actually smack yourself in the face, guys. Be nice to yourselves. Be nice. Gotta be nice. Uh, but all right. RP it up in the jungle. On it. Deep breath. All right. Here we go. So yes, Kiwi heard the whine, because Q-Cat, they were whining for blood, uh, where the the insects were here, and he was just attracted to it without really understanding or knowing why. He worked his way into the swamp and began to eat them. But unfortunately, he, as one mere bat-headed nicheling, could not eat them fast enough, and they began to eat him. In a turn of events, he actually gained the sleeping sickness from the insects, and he fell asleep here in the swamp and just couldn't get up because they were all over him. Every time he tried to get up and would like eat another one or two, there were too many and he would get knocked out and very hungry. Or they were very hungry for his blood. Vampiric little things that they were. So he spent a good portion of his adult life asleep in the swamp. And we're going to come back to that when he discusses this with Banana. Confused about how could he have ended up asleep in the swamp for so long, Banana as a scorpion-tailed nicheling, may have something very important to tell all of the orphans that she adopted uh, about how poisons work. So we might be discussing poisons and toxins very, very soon. Whoa! Oh, thank you so much! Oh, Marie! Marie Anubis, welcome to our little pixel biology community. You are very, very welcome to go ahead and uh, use all of our wonderful emojis. I'm so excited. Thank you very much for that. We now have a cow plant in the jungle. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, considering what happened to Kumquat last week, but I'm sure we'll be able to handle this. Uh, but we will actually be working with uh, Banana and sh her education for the orphans about toxins today, which I think is going to be quite fascinating. However, first things first, we do need to get these two back over to the tribe. Ironically, we're kind of barricaded uh, unless we can get through here before the like vampiric bugs come back for us. Uh, but they need to get back so that they can tell everyone about the kumquats that they found in the jungle. No, no, it wasn't kumquat herself, may she rest in peace. But it was the kumquat healing of plants uh, that they hope to take our poor coconut. This version of coconut with her beautiful, beautiful anteater face. Uh, what is this one actually called? The snout? With her sticky tongue, which is definitely strong enough to fight against the, uh, the insects, the vampiric bugs that we have run into in the swamp. But she is actually about to die. Well, thankfully, with the new time that nichelings have, now that we've extended their lifespans, uh, in the past, this gap between health and hurt would normally mean like, oh, sayonara, my, my beloved, I can maybe get one more baby out of you and then you're going to be dead. Uh, but that's actually 11 days. Oh, oh, <laughs> yee, and I cannot stress this enough. Ha, Perry, yeehaw, oh my gosh, Perry. <laughs> Thank you very much for the bananas. Okay, guys. You guys, I'm trying so hard, but you guys are so cool. Okay, we'll, we will definitely have some nichelings at high noon in a future stream. It's on the list. It's going to be really fun. All right, hang on one second. There we go. <laughs> But uh, Coconut is actually a little bit sickly, and she too would appreciate being able to have access to the Kumquats in memory of how Kumquat has passed away. The reason they call the Healing Fruits Kumquats is feeling that since they discovered these so close to where she died, 
clearly her spirit has become one with the land, uh, as perhaps happens with these carnivorous plants. Who knows, this may actually be the beginning of a twist to the lore of this tribe, where we will actually have perhaps some nichelings volunteer to be eaten by the carnivorous plant, under the assumption that they will be reborn as healing fruits or perhaps the fruits of the island. That's a different twist I didn't see coming. Uh, but I could actually see that they would kind of see the way the kumquats popped up, the healing kumquats popped up next to where kumquat got eaten by the plant. Maybe they're, they might think there's a correlation. So maybe they think the plants aren't evil and perhaps a nicheling needs to be sacrificed to the plant or volunteer to be sacrificed to the plant in order to grow the kumquats, the healing kumquats. That might actually be something that happens with this tribe. Um, wow, that's kind of weird to feel it like just organically develop as a story, huh? But anyway, <laughs> oh my gosh, Eagle Queen. Thank you very, very much for the wonderful bananas and the pineapple emoji. And you should make a video of Tata's best moments. Hmm, let me go ahead and put a pin in that too. Okay, I'm gonna add that to my list. <laughs> I actually think that would be amazing. I think that, uh, actually, that would be really amazing. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to think about that. We're gonna have to think about that for sure. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, uh, and thank you for the bananas. Uh, but yeah, what if the creatures go into the plant to contact their ancestors? Ooh, Dana, I like that idea. So Dana also suggests, what if this tribe thinks that there's something about this plant that connects its root system to the entire jungle and to their ancestors? What if our elder nichelings start deciding to sacrifice themselves to the plant in order to nourish the island and provide extra healing power to the healing plants, the healing kumquats? I could see that happening too. And then nichelings who take the risk of being uh, inside the plant and then being released by the plant might potentially be like prophet nichelings who want to contact the spirit of the land or the spirit of their ancestors. That would be really, really cool. <laughs> Sacrifice to yourself at the, at the end for the plants. That might be really interesting. Uh, we're gonna have to think about that, but I think that I think that there definitely is. Uh, hey, we're doing good, by the way, on the lore category of our stream goals. I think there's definitely a correlation between the healing plants, the health of the island, uh, and these plants, and perhaps sacrificing yourself to these plants. So we'll come back to that. Oh, that's gonna be a little bit darker than expected, uh, but we'll, we'll definitely think about coming back to that. Uh, meanwhile, on the rest of the island, like I said, Coconut needs to be healed. She will soon receive the news from Kiwi and Banana of the healing kumquats. And beyond that, she has just given birth to our little Yutsu fruit, who was the last born of last time. Yutsu is the child of Nanat. He is actually the first, um, blood related child of Nanat, but Nanat is also the proud adoptive father of Banana -na 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 -na, the second, because everybody kept having the name Banana -na 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 appearing from the nameless last time. Kind of hilarious. <laughs> And Burberry, who is honestly one of my favorite nichelings. I cannot believe that we ended up with a bat-winged, bird-beaked orphan in this tribe. That was just so cool. Um, and also, guys, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, but we did actually end up... And I think it, where is my... Okay, yeah, we did actually end up in the other tribe. And let me see if I can actually pull up the picture of it. Do, 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 do. Let me see. Yeah. For the episode of the Fruitleys tribe uh, that we just had, we ended up with more orphans in the jungle, by the way. And you guys might want to check those episodes out to compare to the fact that we had Burberry and Banana -na 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 show up last week. Uh, let's just say that the orphans that have appeared in both realities have been extremely unique. Uh, all right. But yeah, anyway, the boys, we also have Zunu. Zunu, 
you were also Coconut's child. So Coconut has had two children. She is the mother of the island so far. And she has had one child with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And she has had one ch child with uh, Yuzu. And unfortunately, Capybara and Zunu, I just realized, are both male. So it's going to be really hard to pass on any of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Berina genes. Fooey. All right, we'll have to see what happens. Maybe we'll have one more child with... Oh, only two more days left! Yu-Gi-Oh! Old man! Do you want to sacrifice yourself to the plant, perhaps? That would be very, very helpful. <laughs> Uh, all right, there we go. Anyway, she has been the mother of the island, and right now she just is thinking she's gonna die soon, and she should focus on having another child, leaving behind a legacy, leaving behind a female, maybe? What the heck? Where the heck? You guys! We have two girls, and they're both about to die! <laughs> Not good! Not good! Should we have Coconut possibly breed with our, um, Berina? Oh! More bananas! Oh no, these are cow plants! Holy cow! <laughs> Thank you, Tajiri! The banana -na 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 -na. Oh my gosh, I love your name. That is so cool. That's, thank you so much, Tenjui. That's very helpful. We now have even more cow plants. You know what? We're gonna do it. We're gonna say that the tribe is beginning to believe, thanks to all of you amazing people and the cow plant contributions. Uh, we're gonna say that this tribe does believe that you need to feed these carnivorous plants to feed the island and that you can actually communicate with the pa nichelings of the past, your elder nichelings, uh, by sacrificing yourself to that plant. And if you do not sacrifice yourself to that plant and you die on, on top of the soil and not within it, then you don't have a connection to this jungle. This is a very disturbing twist of events. I have never purposely fed my, fed my elders to these plants before, but we're gonna have to see what happens. Um, but I just realized we're low on food and we have literally two females. Should we have Coconut? What do you guys think about Coconut and Yu-Gi-Oh possibly having one more child if it happens so that we could keep the Berina genes possibly going? Or do you think that we should wait heal coconut up and then coconut can you and kiwi have a baby um and like risk a coconut kiwi combo <laughs> a coconut kiwi combo uh because they both have k so we definitely have a healthy baby b and f actually or should we wait until burberry is older because actually he he has the wing as well hmm hmm Let's see, coconut, burberry, hmm. All right, uh, so the, the possibilities for coconut's next mate, and we're gonna get her healing plant if we can too, by the way, uh, are kiwi, Yu-Gi-Oh, or possibly burberry when he grows up, and we're not gonna mate him, her with kiwi at the moment. So should we have another baby with Yu-Gi-Oh to remember this berina d -d 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 and to like try to have another female? Yeah, one more, one more Berina child, and then we'll think about who her future mate could possibly be in the future. So should we have, I'm going to hold still and sip my tea for a second. Oh, which reminds me, uh, while you guys answer the question, should we have one more Berina child? Uh, we'll just yes or no on that for a moment. Uh, and that also reminds me, when I was putting together the stream goals, we had my wonderful kind patrons remind me that there is one very important thing I forgot that should always be a stream goal, that we should never forget, that should be an eternal stream goal, no matter what we're streaming, no matter what I do, we need to make sure, whoops, we need to make sure, my friends, that peach tea is is on the goal uh the little list of goals so uh there we go we've got a little peach tea picture now to remind me that i absolutely need to drink peach tea all right i'm seeing yes on everything fruity bearlings all right i'm seeing so many of you guys say that we should have fruity bearlings also hang on if and also just so you know 
I love this cute little peach tea picture so much that I might just throw it up when I am having like a, a moment to pause and sip tea and I'm being quiet. So if you see the peach tea emoji, this adorable cute peach tea picture on the screen, then you know that Siri's having a sip of peach tea and might be quiet. Ah, there we go. And yeah, Cherry Kitty, there is actually a child named Banana Split in the Heartling tribe, where Banana Nana, Banana Nana's brother, happens to have lived. Uh, so, all right, wonderful. And thank you for my wonderful patrons for reminding me uh, that <laughs> I, I need to drink more peach tea, because I do. All right, let's turn off stream goals. One more sip of peach tea. Ah. <sighs> Let me just go ahead and I'm going to tuck that into the corner. So if you see that pop up, it means I'm having a sip of tea that might take me longer than usual. All right, so we're going to try for a Berina baby and get moving on this. The final things I just wanted to note really quickly. The boys are playing at the edge of the jungle, just kind of all laughing and wrestling and tussling across the cliffside, uh, like pushing through the grass and kind of surprising each other. So imagine their shock, little capybara, banana -na 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 the second, who is now an adult, uh, Burberry, and Zunu, when they were playing in the grass at the edge of the jungle and a rustling sound occurred. It startled all of them. They didn't know what to expect. And that is when Yu-Gi-Oh came out. So Yu-Gi-Oh is just kind of saying hello to his two boys, I think. Uh, and finally, Nanat's parenting skills. This is kind of the twist. We have been so busy fighting these plants, discovering the kumquats, discovering the dangers and delicious delights of the insects of the swamp, that we have run low on food. And somehow, out of this entire tribe, the one nicheling to rule them all in terms of gathering food is Nanat. So somehow Nanat has become the like, absolute best nicheling for actually keeping us alive like through food i think this shocks him as well so all i can think for nanat is that he has somehow become like he's gotten really attached to his uh, his children all his boys he now has three boys he's not like you know goofy gaga attached to his kids but he appreciates the fact that, you know what, Banana's way of adopting orphans, it's kind of rubbing off on him. I mean, sure, Burberry was just this weird little half-winged creature that popped up out of the jungle and kind of gave him permission to join the Fruitly tribe, or Fruitlings tribe, by having an orphan of his own to adopt. But now he's really attached to the little guy. And you know, Banana -na 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 the second has grown up into such a, a good man you know he's he's a fine young man truly somebody that nanat thinks he can be proud of and now he's got a new baby over here with coconut and with little yutsu you know nanat he's not the young kind of goofy man that he used to be and he can appreciate his children so he does try to feed them but I can't help but feel that Nana also wants to feed himself first. So he's been busy trying to collect up the nuts, trying to collect up the berries. And yet every time he gets a little pile of them with so many growing boys in the tribe, I can't help but feel that he dutifully is like, all right, pluck, pluck, pluck. Got some fruit there. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Got myself a nice nut. I can't help but feel that he makes a nice little pile of them. He's so excited. He's had a long day of gathering, being the only one gathering any food in this tribe. And he turns around and the pile's gone. Like I can just totally see that happening because the boys would just like roll by in this tumbleweed of, of chaotic energy and be like, thanks dad. And, and just like take all of the food. So I think he's kind of caught in this eternal battle to try to get a bite of food of his own. So his parenting skills are actually going up and I really approve, like totally approve of this. All right, let's see. All right, let's see. Coconut is going to go ahead. All right. 
And we can carry on now. I know that was kind of a while, but thank you guys. We've got some solid lore established. Make sure you guys remind me when our nichelings get old that we have to feed them to the plant, by the way. I, I, I might need you guys to kind of like push you towards that, to push me towards that a little bit. All right, but coconut is going to go ahead and pop over to visit with Yu-Gi-Oh because she's thinking maybe another child would be awesome. Uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh is getting a little older and you know, Nanat is busy frantically trying to get the food that the kids are eating from behind his back. But na 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 is going to go ahead. He's kind of a, what can he do? He can attack things. He can actually fish. So I feel like he would hear the rustling of the river over here and be kind of curious about it. Um, and I can't help but feel that Coconut, seeing the children playing in the jungle, would lift her long snout and possibly with the tiniest little voice ever. I mean, how loud do you think a nicheling with a little snoot like that could really be? Now that I'm looking at it, I feel like Coconut is soft-spoken, not out of the desire to be soft-spoken, but out of the fact that her mouth is so teensy, itty bitty tiny, she can hardly like make any noise. So she like holds up this long snoot of hers and with a tiny little voice that tries to convey as much maternal authority as possible, sternly reminds the second to search out for the smell of those carnivorous plants before he goes any further, unless he uh, he too wants to follow in Kumquat's fate. So, I mean, really, like, how loud could she be, the poor thing? <laughs> I just love the idea of her, like, lifting up her snoot and being, like, uh, at the top of her lungs. Like, this would be coconut as loud as she could possibly be. Boys, make sure that you check for the carnivorous plants before you go into the jungle. And you'd be like, what is that, mom? Could you speak up? I am yelling, boys. <laughs> like, that's all I can imagine. <laughs> Oh dear, all right. But we'll check for carnivorous plants because we're gonna listen to mom. And, but no, 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 the second, I feel like he's, you know, young, he has grown up into a fine young man, but hearing the splashing of something uh, that just, he can't resist the lure of it because he's got that fishing ability. He would jump onto these branches with like, not even so much as a, how do you do? He would just be like, I hear something and crash through the jungle stepping on the branches, possibly cracking them and bringing apes down on our head. Uh, but they're excitable little uh, boys. So that's all I can imagine. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see. We've also got Birdberry. Oh, he's got a lot he can collect. Huh, it, does he smell? Oh, there's another one of the green plants. I wonder if they would, I guess they would. this tribe would feast from these plants because they provide food, but then they would just have to be aware that you'll get eaten by them. But I think that they would see it as a mutual exchange. They'd be willing to sacrifice themselves as elders to the plants. Uh, but on the flip side, when the plants are green and fruiting, they would also eat from the plants as a gift from the elders or the gift from uh, the past. Hmm, very interesting how this tribe is so different from our other, like same start fruit bat tribe. All right, but Burberry, He's a little guy. I think he's gonna be kind of hungry. He smells something good. There's something that he can dig up. Now maybe we will, ah, oh, there's the peace bear. Do you guys know what this does? I can see your eyeballs, peace bear. Interesting. Let's see. And, all right, let's come down here. Zunu. <gasps> Zunu, with that Berina claw, you are so strong. Why don't you and Capybara jump down and visit with your dad for a minute? So there we go. And then finally, let's get these two headed back over. I think they would know that the danger plant is down here. We'd have to walk past it because of this big tree. So we're gonna get them through the swamp. So we'll head this way. And actually, Banana, can you lead us? She can. Let's just go straight through the swamp and get out of here before we get bitten by those bugs again. There we go. And Banana made it out the other side. Thank goodness. Huh, only an hour into our first turn, but we've somehow developed a ton of lore and story and I am tickled to goodness with all of it. Uh, so, all right, let's go ahead. We're gonna see what the next day has. 
If you give it enough nesting material, it protects babies. <gasps> what? Huh. We might have to see what this peaceful bear is up to then. If you give it enough nesting material, it protects babies, huh? Well, that might be really fun. And speaking of babies, hold still, Yu-Gi-Oh. I need to mate with you. Hold still. All right, there we go. All right, coconut has come up. Please. Oh, no. <laughs> we weren't able to get a baby with Yu-Gi-Oh, but we tried. All right, coconut was not able uh, as she walked past all the boys and as she wiggled her way over and was quite pleased, saying so with her tiny itty bitty snooze voice. Quite pleased to see that banana -na 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 and kiwi have returned with good news, no less. Uh, unfortunately, she was not able to mate with Yu-Gi-Oh and he dies tomorrow. Uh, and unfortunately, I think as banana -na 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 and kiwi have returned with stories of what the kumquat for healing fruits can do, they would see they would see potentially like Yu-Gi-Oh's death atop the soil as a way of as they're realizing, perhaps not becoming part of the island and becoming part of all the the plants of the island. Uh, so, hmm. Here's an awkward question. If he dies and becomes a pile of food on the ground, well, that's going to give me a think. <laughs> all right. Meanwhile, uh, Nanat is going to continue to collect up his food. Maybe he finally gets a chance to nibble some of these nuts without the boys kind of taking them. Keepy Bera is going to come see his dad before his dad passes away of old age. Quite sad. Uh, but no, 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 no. I feel like he would try to do a little bit of fishing. He was an orphan. He was one of the... He and Burberry, perhaps, they're adopted brothers. And I wonder if they have actually become, become a little bit closer. Become a little bit closer. Uh... I, at wondering what their past had at at wondering what went on in the back of their like history and so i think these two enjoy spending some time bonding together especially now that burberry is getting a little bit older uh so they don't mind hanging out here but i do think banana -na 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 the second wonders why he was given the name banana -na 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 before he even showed up to this tribe and perhaps there's something about fishing uh, that just naturally comes to him as a memory of the tribe that he once was part of. Also, it'd be kind of convenient if he could unlock a uh, fish and tail. <laughs> if he could unlock fishing for us over the course of his life, that'd be kind of nice. Just, just to have it, just in case. All right, and Burberry, do you smell or hear anything? Well, he can hear that peace bear, but I don't think he'd want to like leave his brother's side for a moment. So we'll let him just kind of like chill with his brother. There we go. And then over here, hmm, choices, choices. All right, first things first, banana -na 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 and Kiwi have returned from their travels deep within the swamp and within the kumquat fields. They have much news, but their trial uh, has left them a little bit fatigued and hungry. So let's go ahead and get some food really quickly. Oh my gosh, and I think this plant is broken too. <gasps> okay, guys, I noticed this during my recording of the Fruit Lees tribe, but I think in this current test update of Niche, the these stinky fruit trees are broken and they give an infinite amount of food. And like, did you notice not a single one disappeared when we collected from it? And I think that this would have to be evidence to Kiwi absolute evidence uh that we've got uh that we've got a special a special influence from kumquat that i mean i remember last week didn't the fruit disappear like actually last week didn't the fruit actually disappear and it wasn't just like constantly an eternal big thing of fruit because if that's the case i kind of want to interpret it as kumquat getting eaten has given resources and nutrients to this island uh, that mean that there is like an eternal fruiting plant 
I think that'd be really cool. I think that Kiwi picking the fruit off and watching as the fruit immediately regrows would glance at Benenene and they would have to tell Coconut, this is a blessing from Kumquat. I, that would be really cool. I think that this may actually be a blessing from Kumquat. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's infinite right now. And collecting nuts from top of a tree is infinite for some reason. Okay, yeah, so it's a glitch in the update, but we're gonna say that it is a blessing from Kumquat. She has fed herself, unintentionally perhaps, to the plant, and the plant and the jungle, of which our little fruitling tribe belongs, has responded by giving us infinite food. Uh, so there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bye, Daniel. Have a great time. I know, right? Can you, kawaii, right, kitty cat? It's just so cool that we've got like infinite food here. So we're going to say it's a blessing from Kumquat and uh, we'll kind of roll with that. But all right, so I think we're off to a good start an hour later. Uh, but we've built up a ton of the freaking lore and now we can just move along with having babies. But um, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of need, I kind of need some more of this. So I'm going to give you guys our first ad break of the day. Uh, again, thank you for your patience. I've been ridiculously sick all week. So I know it's off to a bit of a slow start, but holy cow, I am so tickled. And we came up with the concept of Wild West nichelings. So I'm going to get some peach tea. Uh, first ad break of the day. And I will see you guys in just a minute.
All right, guys, the peach tea is boiling. I've got a couple minutes. Do you guys have any cues for Q&A real quick? Which fruit would you guys eat? The stinky fruit or the fruit from the carnivorous plant? Tis Petalee, good to see you as always, my friend. And I would eat the uh, stinky fruit because the fruit from the carnivorous plant looks kind of weird to me. Like, I don't know. I don't know any kind of fruit that looks like the fruit from the carnivorous plant. So I would eat the stinky fruit because that looks like an orange and I love oranges. I eat like two or three every day. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, my, my tea is boiling. So if you guys have any really fast Q&A questions, I can answer them whilst we wait. Inst, 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 inst. Inst, 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 inst. How old am I? I'm 30, Senna. I turned 30, I turned 31 in a couple weeks actually. My birthday is on the 26th. Inst, 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 inst. I have no idea what I'm gonna do for my birthday. I've got to think about that. Chips is busy with his studies. He has a big test coming up, like a big test for his PhD in April. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. Oh, and I have a banana here. I'm going to nibble this. I actually am holding a banana. So I'm going to go ahead and nibble this really quickly. But yeah, I'm 30. I turned 31 on the 26th this month. <laughs> and Raven, you saw the poll? I'm really glad you saw the poll. I can only do like three questions or three um, answers. Maybe four. Did I put termites? I guess I did four. But the bat head and the bat wings, I just kind of grouped together for that. Mmm, mm, mm, mm. mm, bananas. Uh, Angie, I like your question. If a god was made today for our Nishling tribe, what would it be? I think Kumquat who i don't know if she's the god of a harvest like some of you guys were suggesting i did see that i just can't reply to all the comments sometimes but i highly appreciate them no joke i will often go back and reread the comments after the streams because i'm just so happy to see them um but if we were going to make a new god it might be kumquat uh i wouldn't say that she'd be like the goddess of self-sacrifice um but she might be the the goddess of the cycle the cycle of sacrifice and survival perhaps understanding that there's like a balance if you take you have to give so if you take from the jungle and you wish for the jungle to continue to be able to give to you uh that you may take you must give to the jungle of your your old dying body that yeah, are you sure you need that? And maybe this means this tribe will think that, that sickly babies should be fed to the carnivorous plant, but they wouldn't see it as a sad thing. They would see it as like celebrating the health of the jungle. That might be kind of intense. Uh, is pizza a mafia? Leela asked. Leela, the answer to that is yes. Yes, it is. The Pizza Pineapper's crew has been spreading their base of operations throughout Del Sol Valley in our Shine Sisters stream. It's been quite the conundrum, but we'll have to return to that uh, nefarious adventure after we finish up the Shine Sisters adventures in Strangerville, which we may work on tomorrow night, actually. Uh, and also Nanot, the god of parenthood. <laughs> I like you guys. I like you guys a lot. Uh, all right, uno momento. The tea is done boiling. Unz, unz. Kumquat has become the spirit of the island. Uh, there we go. Kumquat has become the spirit of the island. Uh, on dark nights, you can sometimes hear her and Nishlings report seeing her in the shadows tending the fruit trees. I kind of love that idea. I kind of also love the idea that now that we are all kind of thinking about Kumquat as a new type of goddess, uh, especially because this plant has now given infinite fruits from itself. Or maybe it's just glitch, so we don't see when the fruit disappears. <laughs> Either or, I could see how, um, I could really see how this tribe 
would would feel like the spirit of kumquat has returned to them and their grief that tore them apart so early last time might actually be kind of given a sense of peace and resolution thinking that kumquat is still with them as the spirit of the jungle itself oh also a whole bunch of fruit thank you guys uh, all right. <laughs> and is the carnivorous plant related to the cow plant by chance? Asked Saga. Uh, good question, Saga. Quite fun. I think so. I think so. Definitely. Also, we have a submission for a new god from Backlog who asked, is Banana the god of potassium? And just possibly. In fact, I'm going to take one more. I actually have a banana in my hand. I'm going to take a quick bite of it. Oh. <laughs> all right there we go you guys ready i got a slight i got a bite of my banana they got a bite of what what do you think this tastes like look we're pixel biologists here we have to ask the important questions about all things biology related i hope that all of you understand your homework for the day chop chop turn in some i don't know fan art or something of what these things taste like I'm quite curious. <clears throat> All right, carrying on. Uh, if we could, guys, we will try to move a little faster the second half of the stream. And we must quickly say goodbye to Yu-Gi-Oh. What is a appropriate way to say goodbye to a Baryan named Yu-Gi-Oh? Should we just be like, it's time to duel as Yu-Gi-Oh disappears? Hmm. Huh. I am not sure. All right, but all right, you guys ready? Ooh, I, you know what? I do think it maybe tastes like a mango. Possibly. Man, I'm mangoes with strawberry filling? Kiera, we have got quite the creative pixel biologist amongst us right now. I am so proud of you guys. Honestly, pixel biology is something I've been into since I was little. Uh, back when, like, I only played, like, Mario Kart, or not Mario Kart, Mario Party on the SNES, which is hearkening back into the archaic days for most of you. Not many of us in this group, I think, are old enough to remember when it was just the SNES. Uh, but I used to make a little list of, like, the piranha plant and the different types of, like, fire flower and the mushroom in the Mario world. And I wrote out, like, where I think these things would grow and what I think they would look like. I drew pictures. So I've been a pixel biologist since I was teensy. I just had no idea one day I would grow up and evolve into a full-fledged pixel biologist thanks to all of you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh, honey melon. It's time to d d die. <laughs> oh, and we have one more meme. Uh, the reason I said that, that must have been very disturbing to just hear me go, it's time to d d die out of the blue. Uh, but it's because I'm trying to make a little bit of a pun on, you know, uh, here we go, on Yu-Gi-Oh. But let's say goodbye to Yu-Gi-Oh. It is his final moments. And we do have like one meme I forgot to show y'all uh, that I will add in really quickly there we go there we are <laughs> i think only those of you who are into Yu-Gi-Oh will get this reference but i just wanted to to share it one last time before we finally say goodbye sweet prince rest rest in peace oh oh he's gone and he didn't even leave behind a convenient pile of food for us <laughs> Clearly, this is a sign that if you do not feed yourself to the plants, then, like, you're gonna just disappear. That you, you have contributed nothing to the jungle, and the jungle does not remember you. He is gone. Uh, so goodbye, Yu-Gi-Oh! I will miss you very much. <laughs> Believe in the heart of the plants! Safria, I want to just, like, give you a high five. <laughs> As Yu-Gi-Oh gasped out his last breath, he looked upon his two boys, and he looked upon the, the blossoming fruitling tribe, and all he could tell them was to believe in the heart of the plants. I love it. He's been sent to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> if you don't feed yourself to the plants, you guys, you get sent to the Shadow Realm, where no, there will be no evidence of you ever having existed. Uh, overlooking the fact that, of course, you had some kids. But there will be no evidence! If you at least feed yourself to the plants, you will grow into the mighty trees of the jungle. 
you have to make a decision. Do you want to be a mighty tree or do you wish to disappear into the shadow realm? You guys make the best freaking stories. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you guys so much. I can't even keep up with all of the amazing memes that you're tossing in chat right now. So just high five to all of you. That being said, uh, let's go ahead and deal with Coconut's grief. I feel that she would be quite sad to lose such a strong and reliable mate that she actually did like quite a lot. No offense, Nanat. She just really was quite attached to Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just where her heart was leading her. Uh, the children are a little alarmed to have lost their father so unexpectedly. I can't help but feel like Capybara, being the older of the two, would feel it is his responsibility to look after his little brother, Zunu, who is going to climb up here and kind of like look around. Here, Zunu, have, have, a, have a little bit of food to eat. Look around where his father just was. And Coconut, she does have a moment to be a little upset to look over the boys. Only one of them are hers, but somehow she has taken them both under her wing, uh, her literal one wing. But she also would be called over by Banana and by Kiwi, who would insist that everything is going to be all right. And that uh, as she continues to age and become quite sickly, she should come with them to the Kumquat fields where they can show her proof that we still have the spirit of Kumquat here and that she will actually help heal the tribe. So, okay, we're going to do a couple things really quickly. A and B immunity, K and J on Kiwi. We, you know, I I know some of you guys are a little worried that it's kind of creepy to have Banana breed with Kiwi because she was supposed to be like, uh, his adoptive mother in a way, but they're all adults now. They've been adults for a while and we have two females. I'm not going to chance this. Uh, so we're actually going to go ahead and have Banana mate with Kiwi. Do you guys have any recommendations for things you would like to see in her and his mutation menu? I totally forgot to change the mutation menu before we got going. So on ter in terms of like bad traits we might want to get rid of, Banana has short-sighted eyes recessive, and Kiwi has short-sighted eyes recessive and bad fertility, but we can't do anything about fertility for a few more generations slash turns. Uh, and I have been thinking it'd be really nice. Uh, how close are we? Oh, we're very far away from nimble fingers. Bat wings? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of bat wings. So maybe, oh, yellow, summer tail. I definitely think we should put in yellow for, no joke, for Banana's family line. Uh, and for Kiwi, I do think the other Batwing would be good. Ooh, and we've got Berina Claw. Let's see. Normal eyesight. Like, maybe normal eyesight. More yellow and good eyes. More yellow and good eyes. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. I actually really, really, really wanted to give Banana Scorpion Tail so that we could talk about, uh, we could talk about like poisons in this tribe. <gasps> There's a squirrel. There is indeed a squirrel. Hmm. And backlog, probably not at the moment, just so you know. Uh, because it, it makes the screen less busy, but maybe in the future if it's something the patrons were into. Yeah, I'm seeing Batwing and yellow eyes. <laughs> okay, you guys know what you want. You guys know what you want. All right, Kiwi. I'm going to give Kiwi, because he's he's got the bat head. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give Banana a normal eyesight. And oh, yellow eyes would be kind of cool. Here, I'm going to actually give her yellow eyes and yellow fur. We're going all banana on this girl, okay? We're just going straight up banana. We're going bananas. There we go. I did it. Can't change it now. And then for Kiwi, I'm going to go ahead and I guess give him normal eyesight. How good? Like, does his, does his head? I mean, here's a question. If he can hear so far because of his bat head, like, he can hear really freaking far, apparently. How do you hear that plant? I don't, I, the, the, is this smell? This would be here. He can hear so far. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, no, there's other nichelings over there. Never mind. <laughs> don't mind me. But if normal eyesight is just like too 
in seeing but you have to be able to see where you're going to move there so all right yeah normal eyesight for kiwi and i think we'll give him he's got velvet paw should we give him bat wing i think bat wing huh I mean, because the thing is, you can give him, you know what, we'll give him bat wing because he's also got the bat head. So maybe he could pass on a child that has both. Um, which arm does he have it on? Okay. I'm not sure if it makes a difference. Like what line, does it make a difference what line you put it on? So if it's blue line here, they're both blue. Yeah, I don't think it makes a difference. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. I'm going to give him bat wing and normal eyesight then. Because he does kind of, if he's going to be pretty... Or pretty. What? If he's going to be able to see where he can fly. he If he's going to be able to fly, he has to be able to see where he can fly. All right. There we go. All right. There. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think that might be a good choice. All right. Sorry. I got a little distracted. Let me have a sip of my tea really quickly. Like I said, I've been sick. So if I seem a little more easily distracted... Where's all our freaking food going, by the way? Because, like, these boys, I just feel like we lose all of our food because these boys are just, like, constantly stuffing their faces, um, which is totally fine. They're growing, but I just think it's hilarious because I just imagine Nanat frantically collecting up all of these berries and all of these nuts, and just as he gets his little pile all correct every day, he just kind of turns around and he's like, where did it all go? And the answer is the boys ate all of it. Uh, all right. And then over here, let's have banana -na 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 the second continue to try to do. Oh, there's a bundle. Oh, Birdberry tried to get it, but he didn't do much with it. Uh, I think banana -na -na the second would jump over to see what the bundle was doing and discover the peaceful bear. Okay, this is totally going to be fine. Look, the bear is like waiting for somebody to have <gasps> a nest here. Okay. Okay, this is important. This is actually a huge lore bomb right here. Like kaboosh. There's some lore happening. Let's back up a little bit. Let's wiggle over here. Let me go ahead. Let's get let's get a baby on the way. Okay, baby is coming. We'll have Banana uh, lick off the fruit juice from Kiwi to encourage him not to be chased down by all of the insects of the swamp. Uh, she'll go ahead and collect up some food here. And we're going to have Kiwi... Hang in, hang in there, guys. This is going to make sense in a second. Kiwi is going to insist to his sister, Coconut, that she must come with him uh, to go to the Kumquat fields and see what Kumquat has done for them. Coconut is going to come with them. Unfortunately, it seems like the healing plants have not regrown yet. Hmm. Fooey. But he has led her over to the Kumquat fields. Unfortunately, they haven't regrown. We'll kind of do a little bit of poking around to see if we can find another one and wait for these to regrow so that hopefully Coconut can eat one before she ends up dying. But on this side of the island, we have a peaceful bear, my friend. A peaceful bear. This is this is the kaboom of story that just exploded in our face. Let me explain. Look where this peaceful bear is. He is next to a nest that is next to one single island piece at the heart of this jungle. In our other tribe, in the Fruit Leaves tribe, their lore is that they are waiting for the mother bat, an all-white bat-headed bat-winged bat to be born on a nest at the heart of the jungle and this tribe doesn't have that lore because they lost it uh they don't remember those stories because they they experienced so much trauma as babies with the rest of the tribe being swept away this tribe doesn't remember that the mother bat is supposed to be born in a nest at the heart of the jungle the other tribe does that's actually their current goal for this tribe, here is another island at the heart of the jungle. A nest is already there, and there is even 
a peaceful bear guarding the nest as though he is waiting for something, as though he is waiting for the mother bat to return and protect the jungle. This is very interesting because it's like we have all of the story set up for the other tribe, but it's in a parallel universe where they have forgotten that lore. And I wonder if the peaceful bear might actually have a way of, of telling this tribe their story, that they're supposed to have an all white female bat, the mother bat, reborn onto the the heart of the jungle i wonder if that peaceful bear might be able to teach them that we will have to see if we can make friends with him um and perhaps we will start by not eating his little friend because he appears to have a little friend right here <laughs> so all right burberry present yourself to this bear uh, very cool though. But yeah, this is really fun. If you have been watching the other series, it's probably not going to make sense if you haven't, but this is kind of amazing. And I am wondering if the peaceful bear is going to teach this tribe about the mother bat that they should be waiting for. Because if that's the case, we may have that goal. And I wonder what comes first, kumquat and sacrificing yourself for the health of the island or the mother bat. Like, I wonder if those two things will happen at the same time here. All right, uh, we will carry on. So moving on, anybody gonna die? Anybody gonna be born? No, we're good. The bugs are back! <laughs> Not today, little bloodsuckers. Uh, all right, I think Coconut would just kind of glance over her shoulder and be like, what's that? Donk. All right, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that Kiwi's heart just grew two sizes larger as he gazes at Coconut. As she, I mean, could you imagine how cute that would be, though? Like, he was attacked by these delicious insects that he loved. Um, but there were too many of them last time he came to the swamp. So they actually caused him to become quite ill and lose himself into a sleeping sickness. And Coconut just glances over her shoulder and with her very long schnoz, just kind of like lick, 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 eats all of the nasty little bugs. Um, and I, I just can't help but feel like he would be like, oh, I'm in love. I, I just really feel that even though their immunity doesn't match up very well, <gasps> and a kumquat has grown! Huzzah! 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 Clearly, this is wonderful. Uh, all right. So they have definitely, they have definitely... This is wonderful. All right. Kiwi's in love. He's not going to get sucked in by the sleeping sickness this time around. Those guys are... Ooh. Ooh. Zunu. I think Zunu, in the spirit of the Fruitling tribe, would hear these buzzy buzzers and little bloodsuckers and dive after them for noms. There we go. Now we're starting to feed ourselves. Good job, boys. Meanwhile, the kumquat... Right at the moment that Coconut licks off all of the little bloodsuckers from Kiwi's ears, uh, quite the romantic gesture in Nishling tribal lands, after all, they look down and they see that a healing kumquat has grown. As though in response to the presence of her siblings, kumquat has sent another healing fruit to them. And now Coconut, too, may partake of the healing plant. Ta-da! Huzzah! 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 And now Coconut's not gonna die. Wonderful. Which means that Kiwi can profess his true love to Coconut, um, which we should definitely do. But before that, okay, eyes and bat wing. She already had, wow, they both have eyes and bat wing. Well, if they don't have a child who has good eyes and bat wings, I mean, Tata -ta must have had a, a chance in that, like a hand in that. All right. And, okay. Uh, his profession of love was unfortunately not accepted just yet. Let's try again. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta put some, uh, be a little, you know what? Maybe Kiwi telling Coconut, I am so in love with you. The way that you lick insects off of the, the spots around my eyes and my ears. Kiwi, I don't think that you romanced Coconut properly. I think that she'd kind of be just licking the remainders of the kumquat healing fruit off her, her bat wing and looking at you like, seriously, that's the best you've got? Kiwi, uh, she was really in love with the Yu-Gi-Oh! the Barina. Let's try again, okay? We're gonna try again. Uh, think of something more romantic than telling her that she does a great job of eating the bugs off your ears. Um, the way... Your 
sweet voice emerges from your tiny schnoz is adorable. Oh, it worked! All right, she likes compliments about her schnoz. <laughs> Good job, Kiwi. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, now we got baby number two on the way. I hope we have a female hiding inside of these two, because otherwise we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, all right, well, that was delightful. Um, how are we doing? We also have a new nest. The peaceful bear, I think, noticed that his bearina friend had been slightly damaged and, and skittered away out of alarm. Uh, let's try to have Burberry, who's a sweet creature by nature, try to reassure him that he will not harm, he will not harm this bearina, who, or this bunnel, who is clearly this bear's friend. Uh, and, ooh, what's this? A heap of meat. The peaceful bear is sitting on top of a heap of meat. Maybe the bunnel wasn't his little friend after all. Maybe the bunnel was just lunch. And he was like, these guys are coming after my lunch. They're bullying me. Bunnel, I don't think you were actually a little friend. I think you were just lunch. <laughs> um... Let's go ahead and just say hello to this bear, this like very curious bear creature then by clearing away some of the grass. Uh, and I guess that Banana the second will share in lunch. Sorry, Bunnel. We'll, we'll offer some of it to the peaceful bear, we'll say. All right, so there we go. And then, was that the berry to meet from Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> Did we just eat Yu-Gi-Oh? If he moved and then died, I would feel so bad. That meat is Yu-Gi-Oh! I just ate Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't know how I feel about that. Whoops. Um, at least it wasn't one of his kids. Peaceful bear! You tricked me! Now I ate one of my kid's dad. I feel so conflicted about where Niche takes me sometimes. Um, uh, I have no idea how I feel right now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. No, look, there's still meat here. That's Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, I didn't eat Yu-Gi-Oh! I ate the bunnel. Okay, sorry, I freaked out. I just glanced over at chat and saw all of you guys being like, that meat is Yu-Gi-Oh! And I knew we just ate meat. And oh, I'm so glad we didn't eat Yu-Gi-Oh! I guess, I guess technically that's an offering of Yu-Gi-Oh! I wonder if that's almost like Yu-Gi-Oh offering up what was left of the, the his self that he didn't need anymore to the peaceful bear who is a guardian as well. I wonder if Yu-Gi-Oh was actually related to a, a wild variant of guard to the jungle who used to be part of the the like fruitling bat tribe when they were a grand civilization. Oh my, quite alarming over there. Uh, but maybe we actually used to have, like, Berina guards. Like, a whole hierarchy system. Maybe this wasn't just bats. The bats were just, like, the top of the batty fruit chain. Uh, and, and, like, the, the elegant tree-dwelling top tier of the society. And maybe there was, like, a Berina guard class who became wild as time went on. Uh, and that's where Yu-Gi-Oh! was descended from. But he has given himself over to the peaceful bear, who perhaps carries some of the lore and legends of the fruit bat tribe. Uh, thusly, I have, I have just created more lore and justified the fact that it looks like the peaceful bear is eating Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, okay. I didn't eat Yu-Gi-Oh. Sorry, guys. I really. <laughs> Ooh, that yeah. The cycle of life is very intense on this island. I agree, Retta. I'm like in a cold sweat right now because I thought I just ate KP Barris' dad. <laughs> I did not. We're good. I can breathe. Okay. All right. Carrying on. Uh, I do think KP Barris would hear a little bundle down here. Ugh, it got away. So I think he's learning how to do a little bit of hunting as well. He too is following his ears as perhaps not unexpectedly, it appears most of this island, including like Banana, was following his ears to the fish. I think Capybara is following his ears and perhaps the defending Berina descended line of this tribe to the bunnels because maybe he is just meant for collecting like the more easy meat sources and defending the island. 
Uh, and then, you know, Kiwi was following his big old giant ears to the insects. So this tribe appears to be about following your ears. What do your ears say, banana -nay? Maybe they hear the growling of your pregnant stomach. So eat up. There you go. There you go. All right, now she's got some food too. Whew. Okay, and little Yutsu can come over to kind of hang out with his dad. Uh, and his his dad's going to gather that. And I think his dad will come say hello to him and see how Banana is doing. Because Nana has kind of settled into the flow of life and he's pretty proud. I mean, oh, Yutsu! You've got spiky body! <gasps> and he can collect just like his old man! Oh, I think that this would make Nanat so proud. He would just be preening himself to pieces, uh, but not preening his baby because his baby is covered in spikes uh, with, with excitement over this. And meanwhile, I wonder, let's have Coconut come over because she hears all of the like screaming of, of these boys. Or perhaps she just heard the screaming that of some goddess floating above them going, No, Yu-Gi-Oh, what have I done? And somehow she feels called to this permanent nest here at the heart of the jungle. So let's see what happens if we have a baby next to the peaceful bear, because that would be really cool. Ah, uh, whew. Yeah, not your, you don't follow your heart on this island. You don't follow your stomach on this island. You follow your ears on this island. That's the way, Lemon Pop. That's the way. Whew. All right, let's see what happens next. I am, I'm still, I can't believe it. Like you guys, you don't understand. I'm still shaking. I was so upset thinking I ate Yu-Gi-Oh. Are you gonna eat Yu-Gi-Oh? Is he gonna eat Yu-Gi-Oh? He didn't eat Yu-Gi-Oh! We shouldn't eat Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm, gotta think about that <laughs> gotta think about that um how, how long does it take before the meat goes away like rip Yu-Gi-Oh! this is awkward it would have been better if the bear ate him because then we wouldn't have to stare at a pile of meat and be like all right capybara son why don't you go play down by the beach until this just disappears <laughs> okay we'll come back to that uh, all right. Do we have sleeping sickness? Zunu? Why do you have sleeping sickness? Because you fell asleep in the mud puddle? Probably. All right. And Kiwi, at least, can return the favor to his new beloved coconut by eating the insects off of her schnoz. So he has done that, and he's all a flutter with excitement over, uh, like, her presence in his life. So we'll clear away that grass. Can she, and she's going to come over to see what all of this hubbub's about and settle in on that permanent nest. I don't want to let his body nourish his children. <laughs> Eat him. Eat him. You people. You people. I guess that's the way that we see the flow of this tribe, huh? Well, should I go ahead and eat what's left of Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, it, it, let him feed the tribe. All right, I'm going to let you guys vote on it. Should this be the much more, I guess, should this be the way that the, the Berina guards help the tribe? The higher, the like higher hierarchy of bats, no pun intended, because bats are going to be higher in the air than a bear, uh, feed themselves to the plants to become fruit. But if you're not high class enough, no pun intended, because bats are higher than bears, to become a bat, should you just, should we eat it? Okay. Oh, I like that, Oscar. Okay, guys. Should we eat it, but say that we throw the remains into the danger plant? Give the, give the kids their substance. We're people of people. All right. Here, I'm going to have his, his, one of his sons come over then. And if the remains are still there, we're going to say that now that they have discovered the remains of Yu-Gi-Oh, we will toss it uh, into the, the danger plant, clearly. Because if you think about it, Yu-Gi-Oh as a friendly Barina dying left behind remains. If our nichelings died, it would just be a bunch of bones that, well, I guess wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to let little Capybara jump up and he is going to be responsible for collecting his his Berina father's remains and putting them into the plant uh and aka we're going to eat them because <laughs> we need food 
<laughs> also, Burberry is going to continue to try to befriend his his new buddy because I think he's just fascinated by this creature. So we're going to offer him some nesting material uh, and maybe, there we go, clear away the grass so we can see him. All right, and we'll leave the, the remains for Capybara to tend to since all of you guys seem convinced that we should eat him. Uh, and then also with Banana the second, we're going to step over and try a little bit of fishing again. Fooey, no luck. And I think he'd be interested to know that Coconut is expecting. Uh, all right, and speaking of expecting, I think Banana should be having her baby any minute now. How is the eternal fruit? Still eternal. Awesome. Uh, and let's come over. Nanot. <gasps> Nana is going to be so proud. He's going to teach his son. Well, get away. Get away a little bundle because he's going to teach his son how to collect from the island uh, and defend their berry bushes from bundles, which I think Nanat would find quite offensive. So little Yutsu is going to help with that. Look at his little spiky body. I'm so proud of him. Phew. All right. There we go. Uh... I'm pretty sure the peaceful bears are like pandas and eat the nesting material. That's a great idea, Summer. I really love the idea that maybe the peaceful bear actually... Can you imagine how cute that would be? Burberry, like, walking up to the peaceful bear <laughs> and, like, handle handing him a bunch of nesting material. And the peaceful bear, which all of the nichelings are now staring at kind of in awe as, as he hasn't said a word until we fed him, would just take the grass and bite into it which they have never seen before. Do you see a nicheling eating grass? Are we cows? I think not. No nicheling across any of the land has ever eaten grass. Grass is for nesting. Grass is not for eating. But uh, this, um, this, uh, this, this bear creature sitting next to this nest, which is without the nichelings knowing it, in a very essential place at the heart of the jungle where hopefully the moon bat mother will one day be reborn. Um, they have no idea about that yet though. But this peaceful bear takes grass, which you do not eat, and he eats it. He just eats it. Uh, and I think that would shock all of them. And I think it would additionally shock all of them when especially seeing that they have bat wings in this tribe and evidence of berina claw, I do believe this peaceful bear would feel, ah, the fruit bats have returned. And he would prepare to pass on a little bit of the legends and lore of the land to them, which may include a berina fighting class, um, possibly include a, a fishing piranha class, which would be really cool. Can you imagine if we could make piranhas? Oh, <gasps> that would be awesome. Really, really aggressive fishing, fishing nichelings. That would be really fun. Uh, and of course, the royal bat line, who rules literally over them all. Uh, so the peaceful bear has spoken. Uh, what he will say yet remains to be seen. He must first see if this tribe is worthy of the knowledge and the legends that he has guarded here by the sacred nest for so long. All right, let's go ahead and see if we have a baby. All right. Uno, dos, tres. Let's have a female, please. <gasps> oh! Oh! My gosh! What do I even name her? <laughs> um, okay guys, we have a female. We have a little female. Also, we have a little bit of a bug problem. This is not fair. I ate those bugs. How dare they still cause a sleeping sickness? Zunu! Okay, we might have to be careful around the swamp. It appears that these vampiric bugs are uh, perhaps far more dangerous than first assumed. I wonder if the dangers of these vampiric bugs are actually why the bat nichelings were potentially uh, like the most important of them all. Was there some sort of epidemic, an insect epidemic, that was affecting every species throughout the land? Berina, bear... Any, any nicheling of any tribe, were they all perhaps being threatened by a terrible disease spread from the bugs that only the bat nichelings could destroy? Also, Kitty Cat Gamer, you just won. That is the most perfect name. My friends, Kitty Cat Gamer has suggested a name that I simply cannot turn away from because this is our first nicheling ever, born with the beauty of the savannah horns born with her mother's spots and with one wing 
we are going to be naming this beautiful, beautiful creature Dragon Fruit. Welcome, Dragon Foot. Dragon Foot, my friends. Because Siri can spell. May I welcome to Dragon Foot? <clears throat> Dragon Fruit. Welcome, little one. So, here we are. We have little dragon fruit who does indeed look like Kumquat with the horns. So I wonder if they feel the spirit of Kumquat is re-emerging through all of the fruit we have been eating, uh, making the cycle of life on this island even more obvious. But we have little dragon fruit and she looks a lot like a dragon. I am very pleased with this. This is fantastic. And she's a female. Oh, freaking thank goodness. Uh, all right. And we do have another baby with coconut in just a second here. She is so perfect. And that name is so perfect. I absolutely love this. This is so cool. Also, go away. Like, I really think maybe the bats became the overlords of all of the other Nishling tribes and had a whole jungle of different types of tribes under them because of the freaking insects. <sighs> Ah, tea. There we go. I really love that. Thank you very much, uh, Des, over on our Patreon Discord for suggesting that I need to add peach tea to our stream list of things to do because it is definitely helping to have like this little icon so I can let you guys know I'm quiet because I'm drinking tea. <laughs> That's important business. But I really love this uh, background that perhaps the insects and the fact that they spread a sickness um, that almost eradicated all of the Nishling tribes are why the bats became so popular and why they kind of almost were like royalty. They were like a healing, a healing tribe in a way. Uh, perhaps there's even some purse now did members. Well, they, you wouldn't have purse now because clearly they can't heal, but maybe they just defeated an, an, an evil that no other Nishling, no matter how strong could defeat by destroying the bugs. Ooh, we've almost got a little bit of like a war of the worlds twist coming in here. All right, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Where did all this grass come from? Excuse you, this was my carefully curated patch of, of ground here. Uh, I think that, you know, Nanat would find this quite offensive. The grass has overgrown on his little spot. He will teach his son Yutsu, the grand art of collecting and maintaining his little spot. Uh, I think that Nanat has just become quite proud of his contribution to the tribe over time. Uh, ooh! Ooh, Oscar, if we put Stinky Tail on these guys, will they actually like stay away? The insects will stay away from them because that would be amazing. All right, we need another baby. We're on our way to another baby. Burberry, he is going to clear away all this grass and excitement of um, having the peaceful bear. Also, guys, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh remains disappeared. I'm not going to lie. We're going to say that maybe Capybara took the remains to one of the danger plants. Um, or maybe he just at least got to say goodbye. I'm not going to lie. I don't feel bad that we weren't able to eat Capybara's dad's, like, remains. <laughs> Sorry. Just not... Not feeling bad about not eating his dad. It might have been a waste of food, but I feel emotionally better. <laughs> Uh, to be completely honest. All right. And Capybara, I do feel that he would be quite impressed by this big bear, but we also need to be quite impressed by food. Uh, so we'll have him come over and with his little growling tummy, he, I, in fact, I think that with Coconut being so hungry, I could actually see Coconut with her tiny little schnoz being very interested at the development of having this grass eating peaceful bear nearby. But also she's pregnant and hungry and going into labor any minute now. So I could see her poking her schnoz out through the grasses and calling out to Capybara as loudly as she could. Capybara, go and get some of the berries for me to eat. Uh, as loudly as she could, mind you guys. Uh, which is extremely quiet compared to all other nichelings. So even though Keepy Bear would love to stick around and see what's going on, he's got some berries that he has to go fetch. So off you go, little one. Ooh! Speaking of some food... Ah! But I missed out her opportunity to get those. Uh, but we'll go ahead. Uh, I guess, why the heck eat from those berries? We should eat from the eternal kumquat plant. Um, right? I guess, should we just call this the kumquat plant? I kind of like calling these the kumquats. The eternal fruit plant. Uh, well, there's a lot of fruit. We'll come back to that. 
All right. Meanwhile, but no, 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 no. The second, I think, uh, also grows a bit hungry. He got the fish. He got the fish. Oh, thank goodness. All right. So he managed to get a little bit of a fish. We'll have him clear away these grasses. Coconut will go ahead and kind of glance around herself. And there we go. All right. That covers everything. Let me see what you guys have been saying. I know a lot of you guys are like, I want to keep you buried to eat his dad, which is you, you people are wonderful. Uh, very special. Also, Polar Workshop. Good point. What I love about this new Nicheling update is that we can actually have our different tribes meet. Uh, I don't want to spoil things for the Ice Age tribe, but let's just say that the Ice Age tribe is about to heat up uh, with something very special that I'm planning. And it is going to involve being able to move multiple tribes around and have different tribes members meet from our different stories because now I can recreate any nicheling member I want to. So in the future we will actually have nichelings from different tribes meet for special story crossover purposes. Uh, just to let you guys know. All right. Send the birds be bird beaks to the bugs. They can eat them. Can they? Bird beak can eat bugs too. <gasps> this is so cool. And bird beak can also, what else can bird beak do? See, Birdbeak can do collecting. Sweet. Maybe our bats will actually end up being like bird-beaked bats. I, I think Burberry. <gasps> Burberry, maybe you are the most true of all of the fruit bats after all. Because you could actually collect and you would have bat wings. Ooh, that would be so cool. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and carry on. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Don't be sickly, don't be sickly. If it's sickly... Ooh, you guys, I need you guys to be prepared. If it's sickly, we might have to make a decision. We might think that coconut and 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 kiwi and banana might feel, especially if they are, like, especially given what happened with kumquat, that sickly babies should immediately just become part of the land. That they are too ill to survive uh, away from the spirit of the land, clearly. Their bodies just weren't ready this time. And their spirits should return to try again. So I, I feel like this tribe would actually feed sickly babies to the carnivorous plants. So let's hope we do not have a sickly baby. All right, you guys ready? We need to see. We need to see if we end up having a baby that's sickly or not. Hey now, Chip. You guys do easily distract me with all the amazing stories and I forget to get the food. Okay, here we go. Three. Two, one, deep breaths. Watch her not have a baby. <gasps> what a baby! Oh my gosh! Is he sickly? Is he sickly? He's good! You guys! <laughs> we have a healthy baby. He has got one bat wing, one velvet paw, uh, D and K immunity. He is yellow as the day is... Uh, like bright um and also also we are going to actually uh we're actually ooh, toxic body recessive uh i, I kind of am so upset like forgive me but no 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 uh but i'm kind of upset we can't give this guy the name but no 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 because his little schnoz is like he's got a banana schnoz uh but we need to give him a name so what name my friends what names uh, whilst you guys think about that. Meanwhile, let us eat these gosh darn bugs that are trying to like wipe us out. Get out of here, you bugs. Uh, and Zunu, I think, is going to tumble out of the swamp, kind of like startled at how he got so exhausted. So there we go. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Okay. Pineapple. We're going to go with pineapple because he does kind of remind me of a little pineapple with his little spiky bike. Little spikies. He's got little spikies everywhere. Look at him. He's like a little pineapple. Uh, Plantain is going to have to stay on the list, Perry, because that's amazing. All right, we're going to go with pineapple because um, he definitely has little spikies all over him. So welcome, pineapple. Hopefully you will have many siblings that will not be sickly. Uh, but all right, geez, I am so happy with how this is turning out so far. Uh, and... Dragon fruit and pineapple have been added to the tribe. 
we only have 10 days left on banana i think that she is blown away with love and awe at how dragon fruit looks let's call capybara up and he was sent to gather up a bunch of berries from the berry bush uh but i think that banana would actually oh wait a second a and g ain't no nope, bad immunity <laughs> To Pierre? Oh, you guys are coming up with too many good names. I picked pineapple, but then some of you guys are like talking about Tapir for like Tapir, the animal, and pear. Ah, uh, okay, guys. Let's hold on. Yeah, and he is a male, which means we only have three females, which means we do need more babies immediately. Um, okay, let's stop everything. Should we go with pineapple or we should go with Tapir? Let me show you guys the choices. Pineapple? or to pair to go with the pun theme and to pair the animal plus a pair to pair i know right right party lemur dragon fruit is so fantastic so pineapple for this one or to pair or peel <laughs> oh my gosh all right we're gonna go with to pair this time i promise we'll have pineapples in the future Tata Pear. Okay. Tata Pear would be amazing, but Tata hasn't really bothered us this stream, knock on wood. Uh, or what your various a choice of botanical accessories. Whatever you knock on for luck. Maybe a clover? What happens if you knock on a four-leaf clover? Like, people say knock on wood for luck all the time. Um, but also, four-leaf clovers are lucky. So what happens if you knock on a four-leaf clover? I have a four-leaf clover right here taped to the side of my bookshelf that somebody sent me to my P.O. box in a fan mail letter once. If I knock on that, is that like double luck? Or does that like make the clover offended? I've got important questions. Important questions, you guys. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with top hair just because I kind of love that one. Um... And pineapple does work better, Oscar, for a spiky body baby. So if we end up with another spiky body baby, like you two actually should have been named pineapple now that I'm looking at him. You two, you've lived a quiet life. I think I need to give you a brother named pineapple or a sister named pineapple. We'll work on it. All right, anyway. <sighs> there we go. All right, let's do this. Banana is going to, oh geez, there's a food issue here, but she's also old. <sighs> Not that old. Banana is going to grab Capybara, who you may remember was sent by Coconut, who is quite hungry, by the way. Uh, and she is going to ask Capybara to watch over dragon fruit for just a moment, just a moment. She just needs to go and see Kiwi about something. So we're going to send uh, Banana away to go meet successfully <coughs> with Kiwi. Unfortunately, he's asleep. Uh, I wonder if him having a sleeping sickness means that they will always have bad mating. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, I'm asleep. I can't have babies right now. <gasps> Which adds to the lore of why those insects would be so dangerous. Can you imagine? Instead of being able to fight against something like another predator or being, uh, or like starving because you couldn't find any food, what if the insects that made our bat tribe so popular destroyed the world? and almost wiped out every tribe of Nishling until the bats arrived and took care of the problem and became the heroes and the kings and queens of the land because you couldn't even have babies. Everyone just slept all the time. No babies. No babies if you sleep. Uh, so the sleeping sickness wiped them out in a lot of different ways. I like this. <sighs> oh. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, let me see. Yeah, to peel. I just like to 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 pair and to peel. You guys have good names. Uh, meanwhile, but no, 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 no. He also has toxic body. <gasps> ah! And D immunity. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh, you guys, you guys. Kiwi is in the swamp and he he is more in love with Coconut than she is with him. And Coconut, I think, is quite amused at how different all of her sons look because she has now had three different sons. Please give me a daughter. 
coconut. But coconut has now had three sons with different nichelings, and I think that she is fascinated by how different all of them are. But no, 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 the second has toxic body. Do you guys think we should actually go ahead and let her try to have a baby with banana no, no, the second? Because I think that would be amazing. We might end up with toxic body fruit bats. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, again, the immunities do match up. Uh, unfor they do match, unfortunately. So they do have D and D immunity. So she, they could have a sickly baby that we would just have to feed to one of the plants. But should we try it out? Like try getting toxic? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. We're gonna we're gonna try it because coconut has she has history for this. She has had a child with a different nicheling every time, and I think that she's just so proud of all of her boys. Please have a girl, who are completely different. Uh. It, well, the thing is, Coconut's not cheating on Kiwi because Kiwi was more in love with her than with him. And then she was with him. And also, you know, Coconut is also mates with Nanat, who I do want to have a pineapple child before he dies. So we've got a, we've got baby having that Coconut is kind of becoming the mother of the tribe. We're going to we're going to try this out. We're going to go ahead and try this out. All right. Let's see. I think that. But no, 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 no would be quite impressed with little Taper and think that it is fascinating. Like, oh, wow, look at him. What a schnoz he's got. And I think that would immediately catch Coconut's attention because she very much appreciates compliments on her lovely schnoz indeed. So, well then, how are you doing? But na 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 the second. Well, let's see. Okay, guys, he's got healthy eyesight, toxic body recessive, what should we give him in the mutation menu? She already has one bat wing, just to let you guys know. There's a potential any child from hers could have one or two bat wings. He is from a fishing tribe, even though he doesn't remember that, but we don't have any fishing genes unlocked. So what should Banana the second go ahead and have for his mutation menu? Bat wing? Yeah, a lot of you guys are saying I should always keep Batwing in there. All right, we're going to say Batwing's there, even though genetically it shouldn't be. Uh, that's what happens when you eat the fruit of the kumquats. Uh, like, eat kumquats fruit in kumquats jungle, and you too shall have bat-winged children. It alters your very DNA. Dun, 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 dun. All right. And then, uh, let's see. All right, we got bat-wing. <laughs> and mask. I was kind of thinking mask, too. I, 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 like, a lot of you guys are saying, like, mask. We already have claw, like, for his genetics. We don't really have, we only have the form, well, we do have Barina claw. That does give fishing. Dots? I kind of think dots. Hmm. Hmm. What do you have? What do you have here? Come here, buddy. He's already got recessive mask, so let's try giving him dots, because I want to see more dots in this jungle. We're going dots. We're going dotties. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did I did I just okay, here we go. Oh, blue eyes in honor of the sea would have been good. He already actually has mask guys, so I'm gonna put dots in there just to see if we can kind of force that in. But now I wish I had chosen mask. I have regrets. That's alright. Let's see if we can have some babies to wash away those regrets. Uh coconut. Being told that her son has such a lovely snoz is going to go ahead and flirt with banana -na 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 the second a bit. It didn't work. He has no idea what she is doing. This is perplexing. She she has approached him with flirty intentions and he is going to be like, uh, do you want some roots? Is that what's going on? Let us try again, coconut. She will be like, no, I want your love. It didn't work. Once again, unfortunately. But uh, the second is a young thing. This is his first, his first, like, new love interest. He has no idea what's really happening. Uh, but maybe he can, he caught on, finally. 
<laughs> All right, so he has figured out what's going on and he has just realized that he too shall become a father soon. Huzzah! I really want to see that baby before the end of the stream. Meanwhile, Burberry, who I'm beginning to realize has the truest of the fruit bat genes, uh, which means I definitely need to stick Batwing in his recessive or his genes as well. We're going to get Burberry. <sighs> Low on food. We're going to get Burberry really excited to speak with this peaceful bear. Um, and also very excited. Where's the next stinky fruit over here? I think the peaceful bear is going to be telling Burberry, who has been listening loyally to all of the stories that he has to say for quite a while. Um, he's going to be listening to the stories and being told about how the peaceful bear is here because this spring is very, very important. This is a sacred spring. The sacred spring of what? Well, the peaceful bear is not quite ready. He does feel he can open up to Burberry because Burberry is both bat winged, at least one wing, and bird beaked. So in many ways, he resembles the royal bat nichelings of before. So the peaceful bear does feel like he can speak of these very special legends to this member out of most of the tribe. Uh, and also possibly coconut because she can eat bugs too. Actually better than Burberry can. Uh, plus she has a lovely schnoz. She's like the queen of schnozzes over there. So Burberry is going to try to impress the peaceful bear by jumping around and d exploring the sacred spring. So we're gonna have him start moving about and uh, making it so we can get to this other hopefully infinite fruit plant easily. All right, there we go. Where are we down here? Food! Nanat, eat! Eat! Feed my tribe, Nanat! You have babies? They need fed. Uh, you two learn from your father. G good little boy. All right, where are we over here? And thank you. Yes, Chip. We are about two hours, so I think we're going to keep going until we have Coconut uh, have her baby. And then I will take a few questions for just a fun little Q&A at the end, and we'll wrap up. But let's see. Next step. Freaking seeking sickness. All right. I think we're learning we just have to stay out of the swamp. The swamp, is, even if you eat the bugs, is a cursed land. The swamp is cursed with the very essence of this danger, which is why the peaceful bear has also been keeping an eye on it, at the corruption at the heart of the sacred spring. Humph. <laughs> I say. Get away from infecting all of my nichelings. Ah! But nay, 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 nay. To the kumquat fields! Kiwi is going to frantically look over at Banana. She is tired and she is old and she needs to have more babies. Uh, apparently, Kiwi is a man of many loves because even though he, at literally the exact. <laughs> Kiwi! You just proclaimed your eternal love to Coconut right here in this exact spot. Less than five days later, I find you here again, proclaiming your eternal love to banana -na 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 -na. Like, make some sense, sir. How rude. Have a baby. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so he's working on babies there. Thank goodness. Um, and then Zunu, I think I'm going to have help search the area a little bit. Let's see. <gasps> and Zunu has found one of the plants. Oh, there's two plants over here. All right. We might make a little nest and look over a nest that overlooks the kumquat fields on the other side of the tree uh, and the corrupted land we will keep an eye on. Also, Benin still has to tell everybody about uh, like the toxins in the poison berries and her, her toxic tail too. All right, so meanwhile, KB Barra, sorry, dude, you're on babysitting duty. So I think he's just gonna get a little impatient and like, fine, they send me to get the berry bush. I got the freaking berry bush and then come down to the eternal kumquat plant. Thank you. And then over here, Nanat, you are going to teach your son the fine art of uh, cracking open nuts. And I think Yutsu is going to just like play with these twigs, like a little bit bored, but all right, dad. All right, I got it. I got it. All right. Uh, and then let's see, we have to pair here. Coconut is ready to have another baby. I really want to have the baby in the sacred nest, but I want to have the baby like right freaking now too. So nest time. Oh, and she can't collect that kelp. That's interesting. 
Uh, oh, and she actually has like one more, two more days before she'll have her baby because pregnancy lasts for three days now. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that. And, but no, 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 the second, I'm kind of, he's, he's kind of feeling adventurous. Um, he's kind of feeling adventurous. And I think he is a little curious about what's going on and kind of wants to tell everybody about like the new baby that's coming. Um, and I kind of want to get rid of this plant to be completely frank, because it's making it really hard to travel my little island. Get out of here. So I think he's gonna come over and he's gonna start wrestling with these toxic berries. Hopefully he won't eat too many of them. Does eating the toxic berries give you anything now? Hmm. Hmm. Poison fangs is only traveling to new island. Do you get toxic body from eating the toxic berries still? Or did that change? I can't remember. Ah, there it is. Yes! Toxic body from collecting on the berry bush. <gasps> but we have these toxic bushes. We have banana -na 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 the second who has got that toxic body recessive. And we have the healing kumquat plants. We might have to eat from the toxins and then heal ourselves from the kumquats and then think about uh, scorpion tails and other toxins next stream, you guys. That's going to be really cool. All right. The land requires a sacrifice, but we're going to have to see if Coconut has a sickly baby or not. And we're going to send Burberry. Oh, geez, Burberry. He has found one of the plants. Oh, dear. Right next to our nesting spot. Huh. Huh. That means that we actually have, after we eat the fruit from this danger plant, a convenient location to feed sickly babies to. That's a little concerning. Mm. Moving on, baby. Uh, dad? Nope, nope, nope. Danger dad, this is danger dad. This is not our actual dad. Let Burberry let out a scream to be heard from across the island. Let his beloved brother, Banana -na 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 -na, the second, absolutely nope through here. He is not going to let his brother die. He also would die if I sent him into the stream, ironically. So he'll he'll casually like try to get that fish out of the way. Um, the scream heard across the land. Kiwi, get freaking away from these bugs. No, not Kiwi. Okay, Kiwi, actually, you get the bug off of you for crying out loud. Uh, Zunu, you too hear the scream from across the land as Danger Dad has just appeared. Uh, and you also found this very, well, I think he'd be more distracted by this plant. Like, probably, uh, to be real, like, the plant would startle him since that is the danger plant. But... I, I don't know. Should we just call it the ancestors plant now? We're going to start calling these the ancestors plant for this particular tribe. Um, also, banana, you pregnant? You're pregnant and you have the sleeping sickness, but it's not hurting you. Make a nest here at the kumquat fields. I think this is a lovely spot. Uh, there we go. And we'll move kiwi away from the swamp just a little bit. Uh, also, dragon fruit, you're old enough to get away from danger swamp, so we're going to scooch you out of the way. Capybara is stuck with babysitting duty, but at least he has the eternal, the eternal kumquat tree. <laughs> Thank you. We have the healing kumquats and the kumquat trees this time. Oh my gosh. Uh, all right. And then we've also got Nanat, who I really do want to have another child with Nanat before he goes so we can try to have a pineapple baby. But he's busy babysitting Yutsu. You can't rush good parenting, okay? And he's teaching Yutsu how to collect things. Uh, all right, is that everybody on that side? Yes. Burberry, you have a problem. Uh, I suggest Burberry, you have a few problems. You have discovered a new land of wonder and terror. You have discovered a land ripe with danger dads, ripe with the, an the hunger of the ancestors waiting to eat you. And you have also discovered uh, the healing plants. So uh pick your path i guess run healing plant run uh run there we go 
<laughs> All right, hopefully we'll be able, we'll have to send Banana Nana the second over to deal with Danger Dad next time for sure. Uh, all right, and then finally, Coconut. Uh, I guess you're gonna have a baby, Coconut. You can clear that away, get back in your nest. There you go. She's comfy. Coconut is not really phased by much in life. I'm gonna admit it. Uh, you think that all of this should face Coconut, that she should be a little alarmed, perhaps a little upset, uh, because there's Danger Dad coming. But I think that Coconut has like this surreal sense of survival and a surreal sense that it will all be taken care of. Somehow she has just the nature of a proper fruit bat queen. She knows that this is a problem for others, and her job remains to pass on the legacy of the fruit bats through having tons of babies. So, all right, this is going to be our last baby of today. Are you guys ready? We're going to see. There's a chance this could be a double-winged toxic body baby fruit bat. Try saying that 10 times fast. Are you guys ready? Let me know with fruit emojis if you're ready, because we need to eat our last dose of fruit for the day, friends. Fruit emojis, please. I guess the more vibrantly colored the fruit emoji, the more you're hoping for a toxic body baby. Chickenberry, don't look at me like that. I'm having a good time. I'm sorry, Chickenberry. I love you too. <sighs> ah, the fruit emojis. Oh, are you guys nervous? Don't be nervous. It'll be good. Oh, I love all the fruit emojis. Thank you. <laughs> oh, they make me happy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, there's so many. YouTube's like, ah, oh, are you getting spam? No, no, this isn't spam. Oh my gosh. Who threw in those tomatoes? You think you can sneak a tomato past me? I saw some tomatoes. Tomatoes of fruit. I'm so proud of you. High five. We'll have to talk about the complicated relationship that strawberries actually have with, um, with being fruit next time. But oh my gosh, we've got so many, we've got so many, and none of my mods are on, so I've got to like authorize this myself. I will go back through and I will authorize all of those fruit emojis in a second. Let's do this. Three, two, one, boom. Yay! she had yellow toxic body and I was like how ironic would that be oh she's got recessive female peacock tail and she has not a sacrifice for the plants all right it's a little girl it's a little girl she has no bat wing um and I feel like she's gonna be kind of a member of the outer ring basically, uh, of, of other tribe members who are not part of the bat heart. Uh, she does have toxic body recessive and bat, ha bat head recessive though. So if she had a bat headed child or fell in love with a bat wing or bat person, I feel like she'd be in the center ring. Um, but she's really cute. All right. Yeah. We're, we were kind of fooled. I'm going to name her Lemon because I kind of feel like Lemon is good when, when you're kind of surprised. Uh, oh, and thank you very much, Backlog. Forgot, I was I was sipping that peach tea until I, like, burst out laughing. But yeah, we're going to name her Lemon because she fooled us. I honestly was laughing so hard because I thought she had the yellow toxic body. But she does not. However, we do like yellow nichelings around here. But she also has melanism. Recessive. Inactive, I should say. And the thing about melanism is it goes completely against the albinoism that we're looking for for the mother fruit bat. However, she is a girl, which is a good thing. Uh, but I feel like because she is melanistic and she has no displayed bat traits, she might be considered kind of like Banana Nana the Second as sort of like an outer ring nicheling. 
and perhaps in the future, only nichelings who are part of the bat line or their Barina descended uh, defenders would be in the center ring and at the heart of the island where the majority of the fruit is. So we might have to look really carefully. But yeah, this is so freaking close. This is so freaking close to um, the color for the toxic body that I really thought it was. But all right, this is awesome. This is so much fun. I love it. Also, Star, the update is still in testing, but you anybody can participate in it in the testing branch. I have all the information in the link in the video description. Uh, but all right. Wow. That made me, that made me laugh really, really hard. I, I love Little Lemon. But all right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for today. So we've covered a lot. We have developed so much freaking lore. I cannot believe it. Let me come down and check the stream goals. We RP'd it up. We developed lore. We talked about the, the bugs and the poison, the knots parenting skills. We're not dead because we ate food. Thank goodness. But not our dad. We didn't eat our dad. Thank goodness. <laughs> So we've had a good freaking time, if you ask me. Um, I can't wait to see if anybody has like more fan art. But that is probably going to be it for now because I think Chips has actually made me lunch and we do have a walk scheduled now that I'm feeling better. So do you guys have any quick just random Q&A questions? There's still a lot of you, so I might just kind of grab a couple questions that leap out at me. Um... <laughs> Okay, 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 Chip. Okay, not my Chips, but Chip's the girl. I will, I will, because she made me laugh so hard. Uh, also, I'm actually going to, Lemon, okay, she made me so excited because I thought she had toxic body. She, she's going to be Lemon, Lemon on, 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 no, because she was not toxic bodied. Because that's the Lemon like, yay, she's toxic body. No, she's not. So we have lemon, no, 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 <laughs> uh, just so you know, uh, but all right. So any just really quick Q and A questions, I'll just grab a couple at random. Um, who's your fave nicheling, Lily Tuff? Uh, I kind of love all of them. Whenever people ask me about my favorite characters in games, I always feel a little bit like I like my favorite characters that I've made. I always feel like I can't really answer that properly because I feel like every character has value and worth and it's just a matter of how focused you are on that character. For instance, Yutsu has not done a lot this stream, right? He's just literally been a baby and sat at his dad's feet, but he is the only spiky bodied member of our tribe. He is a very dutiful little child who has kind of entertained himself by playing with twigs while his dad yammers on about his pride of the best way to gather berries. So the more I focus on Yutsu, I could make Yutsu my favorite nicheling of today if I just spent more time with him. So for me, I think I have become so good at storytelling because I don't have a objective favorite most of the time. I mean, I kind of could, but I mean, I definitely kind of could because Kiwi's like flirtation today has cracked me up. I absolutely love the way that she very quietly talks with her itty bitty snores with our wonderful um, coconut this time around. Uh, but really, the more I focus with any of my characters, the more they could become my favorite, just like with animals and plants. The more I focus on different animals and plants, the more that they could become my favorite. <clears throat> also, Parable, is, is a hot dog a sandwich? Asked Perry. Um, no, because it's closed on one side. That's going to be my answer. To me, a sandwich is two individually separated pieces put together. So my, my verdict is no. <laughs> um, and then let's see. Anybody else's questions? Oh, Kitty Cat Gamer asked, how do I send fan art to you? I have a Twitter and an Instagram, but I have a really hard time getting any images off of those things. So the best way to send fan art, uh, you can always at me on Twitter or Instagram because it's really exciting because then other people can also see it and comment on it like right away. But I have a mail for Siri at Gmail account that I check every now and then. I can't reply to everything really fast, but I, I do go through it when I have a purpose, like searching for a certain type of fan art. 
Also, Chase asked what tribe is Tata from? And Chase, you can actually find out a lot of that nicheling information in our nicheling wiki, which if I didn't link it in this video, because I may have forgotten to change the video description, Professor Callium, who's one of our um, Patreon members, did an amazing job writing up all of that about our nicheling characters for our wiki. And you can find the link to the wiki in the Fruitlease tribe, and it talks all about Tata. <clears throat> And then one last one. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Oh, Sophia, the Gmail is mailforsiri at gmail.com. You can find more about it on my about page. Uh, but let's see. And Party Lemur asked, didn't I used to have a bird named Silverberry? I did. My finches actually are down to just Aussie Eye Jr., Chickenberry, Strawberry, and... Um, Oh my gosh, pumpkin. <laughs> I was trying to think like, what other fruit do I have in there? Sorry, pumpkin. I know you're in there too, honey. Uh, but I, my, my, I lost a lot of birds last year and I haven't really talked about it because I had a mite infection. Uh, but I still have Aussie Eye Jr., Chickenberry, Strawberry, and Pumpkin. So all right, that covers everybody. Dun, 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 dun. I hope you guys all have a absolutely wonderful time. Um, and I hope you had fun. Thank you all to those of you who put bananas and cow plants into our little stream jar. It really, really, really helps out. I can't wait to see what Lemon -no, -no, no does with her life because I do think she's going to be one of our first of our outer ring nichelings. And it'll be so much fun just to see what we get up to with the other tribe. So don't forget, keep your eye out for our Fruit Ling or Fruit Lee's tribe who parallel this tribe. And we'll see how their lives continue to become more similar or more different. But all right, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, I have had a great time spending the afternoon with you. And I might see you again tomorrow for a Shine Sunday, Shine Sister night stream. We'll have to see. But patrons, I know a lot of you guys are into the Shine Sister stream. Usual 7 p.m. EST would be my guess. But we'll have to see. I'll keep you guys updated. But all right. Thank you all. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye, Chickenberry. She's napping. But she says goodbye in her heart. Goodbye, guys. Thanks so much. I hope you guys had some laughs and have a wonderful weekend.